in your Bible say this is God's holy word inspired by the Holy Spirit holy men of old wrote no they spoke holy men of old spoke as they were moved upon by the Holy Spirit that same Holy Spirit is upon me to hear tonight upon Kubis to teach tonight in Jesus name right Paul an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God to the saints which are at Ephesus and to the faithful in Christ Jesus where's my pen right so more or less the last three four five meetings I don't know how many they were we talked about in Christ okay in Christ okay just to just to get us going for the night the last five sermons I spoke on in Christ. And uh, we tried to go through Ephesians chapter 1, but up till now we could never get past verse 7. So uh, we started and we started again, then we started again, then we started again, and we started again. So we're going to start again tonight. <laughs> but we couldn't get past verse 7 because every verse is so rich with everything in Christ, in Him, in love, in Him. You know, and uh, in Christ, you know, what, 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 what got me the last week was uh, when God spoke to Moses in Exodus chapter 3. This is how God explained himself. He said, go tell the children of Israel that I've sent you to deliver them from the hand of Pharaoh. And Moses said, it's all right to say I must go, but what do I tell them who sent me? And God said, I am that I am. Full stop. Go tell them, I am has sent you. And we looked at the last couple of messages that I am is not just a blank check that you must put in what God wants to do for you. And this is the teaching we had for years where God says, I am Jehovah Jireh, your provider. I am Jehovah Shalom, your peace. I am Jehovah Roi, your shepherd. I am Jehovah, you know. And we, we got that. And God spoke to us and said, this is more than just a blank check. This is actually a confession of who you are. It's a life that you need to enter in and not just a getting from God, but a moving into your destiny. And uh, God, you know, Jesus came on the scene and he said over and over and over, the works that I do are not my works. It's the works of the Father that sent me. The words that I speak are not my words, but the words of Him that has sent me. Then He changed it. He said, the works that I do is not I that doing it, but the Father that's dwelling in me that's doing the work. And then He says, the words that I speak unto you are not my words, but the Father in me is Him that speaks. You know, I said, oh, how can this be? Then Jesus said a couple of times, I and the Father are one. And they actually picked up stones to stone Him because he said I am the father of one and Jesus said for which work do you want to stone me and they said no we don't want to stone you for the works we want to stone you because you that are just a mere man make yourself equal with God and then Jesus said in John 10 34 does not your law say I say that you are God's if he then says it about him to whom the word come, is it too much if I who the Father has sent it said I am a son of God? Okay, now Jesus comes in John 20 verse 21 and he says, As the Father has sent me, even so send I you. Not a different sending, not a different anointing, not a lower degree of anointing. Exactly as I was sent by the Father, so I am now going to send you. And and Jesus over and over said, I and the Father are one. Now he prays this awesome prayer in John chapter 17. Father, I pray that they will be one. Even as I and you are one, I in you and you in me, let them be in us and we in them, I in them and they in me, so that the world can know that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given them, that they may be one. So God has given us his glory, God has given us his everything. Now 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 17 says, if any man be in Christ, now remember, to the faithful that are in Christ did we read verse 1 yeah we did okay so he says if 
Any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Behold, the old things have passed away and everything has become new. So that is, I am in Christ. But now Colossians 1, 26 and 27 says, The mystery that's been hidden throughout ages and generations has now been revealed. Christ in us. Okay, if, let's do it differently. He says, the mystery that's been hidden throughout ages and generations. So rich in glory. Christ in us, the hope of glory. So the fact that we know he is in us is so rich in glory. But it's only a hope for another glory. So I got to understand that I am in Christ. Christ is in me as the Father has sent Christ. So Christ has sent me as Jesus stood up and said, Philip, have you not seen me? If you've seen me, you've seen the Father because I and the Father are one. But no man can come to the Father but by me. I am the way, the truth, and the life. John chapter 14 verse 6. So Jesus become this way to the Father and as he and the Father is one, so now I and the Father are one. So if Jesus said, if you see me who seen the Father, we got to come to a place that if people see us, they must see the Christ. <laughs> a total unity with God Almighty. Okay, so we got to step into it in some other way and understand who we are, what we are, and so Jesus comes on the scene. Now, remember Exodus chapter 3 Moses, go tell them, I am that I am. Go tell them, I am has sent you. So here Jesus comes on the scene and he starts with the I am confessions. I am the light of the world. Hmm? I am the bread that came down from heaven. I am the door to the sheep. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lay down his life for his sheep. I am the door to the sheepfold. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus dies, risen from the dead, ascended to heaven, and years later, John is on the Isle of Patmos, and here comes Jesus and appears to him. And, he, and John sees him in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks with hair white as snow. Man, man, golden girdle around him, you know, all oh, feet like burning bronze in the fire, eyes flaming with fire as the angels are jumping up and down. And he says, John, I am. I am alive. I was dead, but I am alive forevermore. I am the beginning and the end. I am the Alpha and the Omega. I am the first and the last. I am. I am. I am. Now, if this is because He is so in God and God is so in Him, and now the prayer is that we must be in Him and He in us, and all the scriptures are there, all the promises are there, and Second Peter 1 tells us, through knowledge of these promises, we can now become partakers of that same divine nature we are very man but we are very God we must step into that which God has called us for Paul says oh that I may know him Philippians 3 verse 10 and the power of his resurrection not that I have attained it yet but I'm grabbing that for which Christ has also grabbed me so that means I must now stand up and start flowing into the I am confessions then I must start saying I am a child of God I am the light of the world I am a city that's set on a hill. I am the righteousness of God. I am a partaker of the divine nature. I am filled and flooded with the light of God. I am that I am. And this is what Paul says there in 1 Corinthians 15 verse 10. By the grace of God, I am that I am. And I will not frustrate the grace of God. It's a good introduction. All right. That's more than some people will preach in six weeks. Ephesians chapter 1. Hmm, my new Bible. Let's go. Okay. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God to the saints which are at Ephesus and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. Now, one thing that I've learned here is we've got to confess it. You must say it. You must confess it to possess it. You know, the righteousness which is of faith speaks. It's the saying that brings me into the having. Chris has said it here today, he said it yesterday, that those people could not enter because what they heard was not mixed with faith, because they didn't say what God said. They said, you should have left us in Egypt. We should have left 
in Egypt to die there. And this is what God said, well, if you want to die, die in the desert. <laughs> right. To the faithful in Christ Jesus. Listen. Grace be to you. And peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be to you and peace. Man, this is going to be great. From God the Father. And the Lord Jesus Christ. Ah. Did you know that every single letter in this New Testament, in the first two or three verses, it says, grace and peace to you. Grace and peace to you. Grace and Did you know that every letter ends in the last few verses with peace be to you, or grace be to you. Peace be to you, or grace be to you. Now I want to say, for those that are in Christ Jesus. Now we have confessed I am in, I am this, I am that, I am that. But tonight, if I am in Christ Jesus. Then one of the first things he says in this letter. Grace and peace be to you. Now we all know John 1. I don't know if I have to quote that again. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God, etc. But this word was made flesh and dwelt amongst us. And Peter says the same. He says, and we beheld his glory, the glorious of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Full of grace and truth. The law was given by Moses. Grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Now he came and he was full of grace. The law was given by Moses. Grace by Jesus Christ. So out of his fullness of grace. Have we all received. Grace. For grace. I want to add it. For grace. For grace. For grace. For grace. If you seem to have worn the grace up today. I tell you look up. There's more grace. <clears throat> Where sin abound. Grace does much more abound. If you think you've messed it up right now. God says I've got enough grace to cover that. To help you. To carry you through. If you think you're not making it. I mean Paul says man there was an angel of the, of the devil. Buffeting me. And I concerned with God. And I said Lord how can I get rid of this thing. He said and I kept on knock knock knocking on heaven's door. And all of a sudden God spoke and he said. Hey hey hey. Hey hey Paul. My grace is sufficient for you in other words you don't have to sit with this thing it's grace that's going to take you through don't try and get rid of it by man made rules and regulations grace grace but tonight I want to touch on the other one and peace okay so every single letter has peace in the first few verses but when it comes to Peter and to the book of Jude they say it differently they say may grace and peace be multiplied hmm? it's like when I read it I realized man if there's something we need multiplication with in our lives it's peace I mean, grace is like everybody understands grace right now. But what about peace? What about that heartfelt rest where nothing troubles you, nothing makes you anxious, nothing makes you worry, nothing makes you fear? I mean, I mean, you're sailing, bruh. I mean, it's peace. Ah, there's nothing in this world that can disturb you. And don't look at me like a cow at a new gate. I tell you, you need peace. Otherwise, Paul would not start the letter with grace and peace be to you. If you are in Christ, the first thing you need to get is peace. Amen. Now, I want to come from an angle here. I think it will work good. Isaiah 26 verse 3 says, Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. Wow. God will keep you in perfect peace. If your mind is stayed on him. 
You are all right. Are you all right? If we are in Christ, it says so much. And one of the things it says in Ephesians 2 verse 6, He raised you up together. Previous verse would say you were dead in your trespasses and sins, but then He has quickened you. And He raised you together, says verse 6, seated you together with Christ in heavenly places. In other words, I am not seated on earth. I'm just operating on earth. But my place of position from where I operate is from heaven. I don't operate from a worldly standpoint, from a fleshly standpoint, from a law standpoint. I operate from a higher level. It is called heaven. Because Isaiah 66 verse 1 says, The heavens, O God, are thy throne. So if I have been raised together, seated together with Christ in the heavenlies, that means I'm seated right on his throne with him. He didn't keep the throne from me. I'm seated right in the throne with Christ Jesus. Now Colossians 3 says the following. If ye then be risen with Christ. Okay? Amplified Bible. Set your mind. If you are in Christ, peace to you from God the Father. Isaiah 26 3. Thou will keep him in perfect peace. Whose mind is stayed on you. Okay, Colossians 3. If ye then be risen with Christ, set your mind and keep it set on the things that are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God and not on the things below of this earth. For your lives are hidden with Christ. In God. I mean, I mean, set your mind that your life is hidden. It is with Christ. It's in God. I mean, you are so covered. You are so captured. You are so captivated. You are so taken control of by the Almighty God. There is something. You gotta make it. You must make it. You will make it. You shall make it. You've gotta make it. Your life is hidden with Christ in God. Set your mind. Keep your mind there. Because God said, if you keep your mind there, I will keep you in perfect peace. But you got to understand that you are in Christ. You are not in the Van Rensburg family. You are not in the Ferreira family. You're not in the Deploy family. You're not in the Detroit family. You're not in the whatever family. Did you know all those family badges? You know, they normally have two goats on the side. It just shows you what a family badge is. It takes you right back into the goat family. You are a sheep, not a goat. I've never seen a family badge with two sheep on the side. It's normally two. Uh, you know. Call me Bok, huh? Call me Bok, huh? Matthew 6. Man, it's going to be cool. It's going to be so great. Okay. On the way to Matthew 6, let me quote another scripture to you. In... <laughs> How many have we quoted already here tonight? I mean, Philippians 4 says the following from verse 4 through verse 9. Okay, let's just do the main portions. It says, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say, rejoice. Then the next word must go out in this house tonight. And for you sitting there in your house, listen. The next word. Be anxious. Oh, you know it. So why do you do it? <laughs> Be anxious for? Nothing. Okay. Anxious for no thing, nothing. Okay, the word anxious is worry. Do not worry about anything, do not take care about. 
Have you heard the English saying people come to you say, okay, take care. If they say it, say no. Because Peter says, be careful for nothing. 1 Peter 5, 7. And here it says, be anxious. Same word, care, worry, anxiety. Okay, what does it cause? Stress, fear, and turmoil in your life. Okay, I'll preach to you and you're going to take it. Be anxious for nothing. But by prayer and supplication and thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto the Lord. You are with me. And the peace of God that passes all understanding will rule or fill your heart and your mind in Christ. Huh? We? 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 Oh, you got it. Okay. So if I take my request, I don't get anxious. I don't get worried. I don't get stressed up about situation. But if something faces me, I immediately go take it to God. In prayer, supplication, thanksgiving. According to 1 Peter, I cast it on Jesus. Then the peace of God that passes understanding will take control of my heart and my mind in Christ Jesus okay so there's the cycle complete again to the faithful in Christ Jesus peace unto you from God our Father thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stay on thee do not be careful or worried or anxious about anything. But let the stuff go to God. And the peace of God that passes all understanding will take control of your heart and your mind. In Christ Jesus. Peace. Oh, Noela. Yeah. If you want to speak in real tongues. Open your heart for this word of peace. Take it in. Take control and take hold of it. And don't let that anxiety come again. Don't let that fear come again. Reject it by getting your mind on the things above. That was the interpretation. All right. Verse 25. Therefore, I say unto you. Now, Luke 12 and Matthew 6 says the same stuff. Take no thought. Are you, are you, are you? In other words, don't let your mind get what I'm saying now. Because it's your mind that gets the thoughts. Take no thought for your life. What you shall eat. Or what you shall drink. Ah. Take no thought. About eating. And drinking. Okay. He goes on. Oh, drinking, drinking. Drinking. Oh, it's right. Drinking. Well, mm, 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 mm. drinking. <laughs> Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat, what you shall drink, nor yet for the body, what you shall put on. Are you with me? Is not the life more than meat? Okay, the life, the life is more than meat. And what? And what? The body. More. The life is more than meat. The body is more than raiment. Mm, ah, whoa. 31. Therefore, take no thought, saying. 
Okay, he wants to stress this thing now. Take no thought saying, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? Ah! Who? Oh. How oh, ye? Hmm. How far are we going to get with this Lord? Mm. 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 Shall I come down? Mm. 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 Maybe I should read the whole thing. <laughs> Take no thought saying, What shall we eat? We shall drink. We shall be clothed. For after these things do the Gentiles seek for your heavenly Father. Know that you have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Therefore take no thought. Years ago we had the tent up. And I studied that verse in the Greek lexicon. Now you know I'm not a Greek and I don't understand Greek. I just did it with the books that they give you to make it simple. Right? I don't know the original Greek. I know he's dead, but I don't know him. <laughs> okay. Don't worry. That's just for the theologians. But I studied, and this is what I came up to from that verse. Do not take a thought that will cause you to worry and then make you to say do not receive a thought that will cause you to worry and then make you to say, oh, what, what are we going to eat? What are we going to eat? No, oh, what are we going to drink? What are we going to drink? Oh, what are we going to put on? What are we going to put on? Okay. It seems like I hit a home run for 90% of you. Do not take a thought. That will cause you to say the negative stuff about your eating, your drinking, your clothing. Is not the life more than that stuff. Is not your body more than the clothes you put on. God is trying to get us somewhere. But our confessions have kept us from the life and the body that God wants to bless. Now, I really don't know where the next meal is coming from. Mm. Well, I don't know where we're going to get money for pet petrol in our tank. I really don't know. Well, I don't know where the money is going to come from to buy the children clothes or school. I... <laughs> okay. This is where we need the crowds that said, Go deeper, Papa. Go deeper. <laughs> But because I'm not your papa, we're just going to hit at home. <laughs> and take it for granted that you all understand. <laughs> but seek ye first the kingdom, kingdom, and his righteousness, and all these things, eating, drinking, clothing, will be added. But first, you must understand the life and the body. Amen. The life and the body. Hmm? Jesus says something in Luke chapter 17, verse 20 and 21. He says, the kingdom of God will not come with visible observances. But the kingdom of God is within you. Okay, you should have seen it now. So, if we're now busy with Christ in us, God in us, we in Christ, Christ in us, I am, I, I, then the kingdom of God is within me. I'm already a king, so I'm ruling from inside. I'm seated in heaven. I'm blessed with all spiritual grace in heaven. So, I, I'm, I'm, what kind are you? You got to go get Shrek 1 again and look at it. One of a kind. There is no other kind like us. So if the kingdom of God is within us, and we now heard all this other good stuff that's going around with it, listen to Romans 14, 17. I just quoted. The kingdom of God 
is not meat and drink. Other translation. The kingdom of God is not eating and drinking. Does the two scriptures come together? But righteousness Peace Joy in the Holy Ghost Righteousness, peace Joy in the Holy Ghost That's the kingdom of God There's so much joy in the kingdom Rejoice in the Lord always And again I say to rejoice be anxious for nothing, but let your request be made over unto the Lord with prayers, supplication, and thanksgiving. And the peace of God that passes all understanding will rule your hearts and your minds in Christ. Further, brethren, whatsoever things are pure, right, and of a, you know that stuff. Think on these things. Think, think, set your mind. Think, set your mind. Think, set your mind. Thou will keep him in perfect peace. His mind is set on there. Think on these things. And the God of peace, verse 9, shall be... With you. Do, you. do you think God got real worried and anxious when he started his creating process? I mean, there's God. He says, let us. Let us get this creation going. Let there be light. Oh, yes. We really now got to move this thing. I mean, do you think light's going to come? <laughs> Son, I know you're not born yet, but I mean, you're here before the foundation. I mean, you're still in me. You've got to come from the womb of the Father. And I mean, and you've got to come by the Spirit over Mary. I mean, it's still a long distance. But can you agree that we've got to do something now? I mean, if this light doesn't show up, we're in big trouble. I mean, we're going to lose our authority as God. Let there be a firmament and let there be a division between waters and waters. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Spirit of God, hover. I hope the waters are going to listen. Woo! And God is biting his nails in the spirit realm. And that's where all the valleys come from when the nails hit this earth. Man, and all the mountains when God spit out his anxiety. Oh! Or do you think God just said and it was? Do you think it was just peace? And God said it was good. And again God said it was good. And then God said it was good. And then God rested. And in his rest he made man. And he looked around and man was walking there and he and God spoke. God said, well it's not good. We've got to make you somebody to be with you. So he made somebody else from the rib case. And God never rested. Save that husband of mine. Oh Lord, look at ah, God. Ah. And all the angels. Okay, no, it's not true. <laughs> Kingdom. <laughs> Righteousness. Okay, all this in the word peace. To all those in Christ Jesus, peace from God the Father. Don't be anxious. Cast the stuff off. Peace of God will be there. The God of peace will be there. God, are you trying to tell us something? Yes, you shall call him wonderful Wonderful. You shall call him counselor. You shall call him mighty God. You shall call him everlasting father, prince of peace. So the minute the father comes together with this whole thing, it's peace. Jesus is born. Peace on earth. Good will toward men. Jesus comes out of the tomb, appear to the disciples. Peace be to you. 
Jesus is going, he says, my peace I leave with you. Jesus said, whenever you go into a house, say, peace be to this house. Isn't it funny that he says, blessed are the feet of them that brings the gospel of peace. When he talks about the blessedness of our feet, he doesn't call it the gospel of grace, neither the gospel of God, neither the gospel of mercy. He calls it the gospel of peace. You just missed it. No, you didn't. You got it. Uh, so the kingdom is within us. Righteousness, peace, joy in the Holy Ghost. Moses says that if you want to live by the righteousness of the law, you've got to do the law. But Paul says, if you live by the righteousness of faith, you've got to speak. Because the righteousness which is of faith saith. It says something. It says, do not say this, but say. So I want to take it quickly. Do not say the wrong stuff. We've said it over and over. Say the right stuff. Do not say, I can't. Say, I can. Do not say, Agus the... Yeah, it's me. Yeah, yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> You'd be surprised what people say about themselves. It's all right. We've now spoke about don't say it about that, don't say it about... But what do you say about yourself? Hmm? You're all right. Right. Think, fella. Yeah, I'm so clumsy. I always drop stuff. <laughs> say it. You're going to keep on dropping it. You're going to break everything in your house. Hmm? Yeah, stupid. I always bump myself. I always lose keys. Okay, I don't talk to you. I'm just talking to the people that are living in the house with you. Now, where's my cell phone again? I can never put the stuff at the right place. Anybody see my car keys? I, you know, I don't even ask anymore because, you know, I, I lose them 20 times a day. How many times have you said that? Most probably you're going to lose them again tomorrow. Why not say, I am a clever dude. I am not a forgetter. I remember where I put keys. I just listened to another guy about three weeks ago. He said, uh, he got in the airplane and there's this woman sitting next to him. He said, so what are you doing? She said, Oh, I'm a photographer. She says, oh, that's awesome. I like photos. She said, yeah, uh, but I'll never get rich out of it. So he said to her a little bit later, he said, so do you think one day you want to be rich? She said, well, everybody want to be rich. She said, well, maybe you should start doing something else. She said, why? He said, oh, you told me earlier on your photography will not make you rich. Do not say the wrong stuff, but do say the right stuff. Do not say stuff that will cause you to worry. Do not take a thought that will make you anxious. I don't know how to act that out. Now, now I'm going to cause a lot of family fights here tonight. No, I'm not going to cause a lot of family fights. I'm going to release you from that stress and anxiety in your home. Jesus said, you know, now that's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Righteousness speaks. Now listen to this. And joy in the Holy Ghost. Now listen to what Jesus says in John 6, 63. The words... That I speak unto you. They are spirit. And they are life. Is life not more than food? Is the body then more the clothing? The words. Uh, righteousness, peace, joy in the Holy Ghost. The words that I speak. They are spirit. And they are life. 
Disciples start going. He said, no, this is hard. We can't take it. Jesus said, do you also want to go? Peter said, to whom shall we go? Because with you are the words of life. Hmm? So with that in mind, let's do Romans. Hmm, it's nice to have a new Bible. Spanking new. The Bible pages still stick together. Ah, brand new. Oh, I haven't kissed it yet. Ah, it's so new I don't even know where Romans is. Hmm? Hmm? Romans. Eight. I haven't kissed my new Bible. Forgive me. Thank you, Jesus, for sending me your word. Thank you for giving me the written word that I can learn about the spoken word. Okay. In Christ, peace multiplied. Perfect peace, mind stayed on thee. Don't be anxious for anything. Don't worry. Hmm? Don't worry about anything. Take no thought. Do not take a thought. Don't get your mind. Hmm? Take a stress break. <laughs> Fill your mind with prayer. The good one that you get. Life is more than meet and okay <laughs> kingdom speak speak okay so we have the mind we got to speak oh sp 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 speak it's that ss of mind that wants to jump out of the garage speak <laughs> got to speak we have the holy spirit what else did we get that stood out here tonight we have the life the life and we have the body now it's getting too interesting. <sighs> Verse 5. Are you Romans? For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit, talking about mind. Verse 6. For to be carnally minded is death but to be spiritually minded i hope you hear is life and peace say 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 spiritually mindedness is life and peace i am in christ Okay, listen to this. 1 Corinthians 2 says, from verse 9 through 16, he says, What the eye hath not seen and the ear hath not heard, never come up in the heart of man the things that God has prepared for those that love him. But God has revealed them unto us by the Spirit that he has given us. For no man knows what's in the man except the thoughts or the mind or the Spirit that's in the man. No one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. We have not received the Spirit of this world, but the spirit that is of God that we can know the things that God has given us. The natural man will not receive it but the spiritual man is not judged. He will receive it. Verse 16. We have the mind of Christ. All right, Let's read on. Okay. I hope it's going to help somebody. Okay. Life and peace. Ooh, life and because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither can it be. Verse 8. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. Confession time. I am not in the flesh. I am in the spirit of God. Have you been saved? Have you been fooled? Okay. So he compares the people to those that do not have it. And those that do have it. And those that have it mustn't say what the people say that do not have it. We must say what we do have. I am in the spirit. I am spiritually minded. That means I have life and peace. 
but you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Do you belong to Christ? Then you do have the spirit of Christ. Come on. The song that John has been singing now lately. I belong to you forever. I belong to you. John chapter 10. No man will pluck you out of my hand. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lay down his life for his sheep. You belong to him. He bought you with a price. He redeemed you. He cleansed you. He washed you. He raised you together. Seated you together with Christ in heavenly places. You are a ruler, a reigner. You are a magnificent, awesome man and woman of God. You cannot but make it. Be rejoiced right now because you are more than a conqueror and if Christ be in you the body is dead because of sin but the spirit is life because of righteousness but if the spirit of him now remember if he then be risen Colossians 3 now if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you in 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 you you in him he in you he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you Life, body, spirit, thank you. I receive, Lord, I believe. Oh, Lord, I believe all things are possible. Lord, I believe. And, Lord, All things are possible to him that believeth. All things are possible to him that believeth. All things are possible, God. All things are possible, God. Jesus said to the man whose son was moonstruck, All things are possible to him that believeth. It's possible to you, man. He has sent you as the Father sent me, so send I you. He raised you up. He filled you with the Holy Spirit. He's quickening your moral body. He's blessing you with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly. He has justified you. He has glorified you. He has chosen you in the beloved. Man. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Verse 6, just the first portion in the Amplified, then we jump over to the King James. It is He who has qualified us. We're talking about the I am life, the I am confessions. It is He who has qualified us, making us to be fit and worthy and sufficient as ministers jump to the King James of the New Testament. Not of the letter, but of the spirit. For the letter killeth, but the spirit giveth life. Does this seem exactly the same as John 6 where Jesus says, The letter killeth, the spirit give life. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit life. Same story. Romans 8, he that thinks spiritual is spiritual, he that thinks carnal is carnal. For to be fleshly minded is death, but to be spiritual minded is life. Same story. We are fit. We are qualified. He made you fit. He made you qualified. He declared you qualified. He said I'm a captain. That makes me a captain. I don't have to go through graduation ceremonies. I don't have to go through the steps of normal education. I am qualified because I said yes to him. Hmm? Verse 7. 
But if the ministration of death, written and engraven in stones, was glorious so that the children of Israel could not steadfastly behold the face of Moses for the glory of his countenance, which glory was to be done away, how shall not the ministration of life, brackets, spirit, life, be rather glorious? For if the ministration of condemnation be glory, much more doth the ministration of righteousness exceed in glory. <laughs> Stop for a minute. Imagine here comes Moses. Oh Lord, show me your glory. God I'm going to pass by you. And you'll see me from behind. And I'll hide you in the cleft of a rock. And my goodness will pass. And you know rocks were breaking. And God is passing. Wow. Moses coming down from the mountain. He's got two table stones. With a law in his hand. His face is shining. Joshua said Moses you better put something over your face. People will not be able to handle the glow that you have. Wow. But that glow was to be done away. No, no, no. The law was to be done away. The tables of stone was going to be done away. And that will take that glory out of the way. The ministration, the law of death written on tables of stone came with so much glory. It came with glory. Now, the word became flesh and we beheld his glory. The glory of God himself. Not the glory shining on Moses' face. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3. He is the sole expression of the glory of the divine. The outbeaming, the radiance of God Almighty. Hmm? Thank you. He says now, this ministration of glory was to be done away with. Now there's another glory that's supposed to stay. Which is life. Which is the New Testament. Which is the Spirit. Don't you think there should be something greater yeah. happening to the church of Jesus Christ? Yeah. Come on, if you can't be stretched for something greater, go sit in a denomination where you hear sermons, sermons every week that's been prepared 500 years ago by Luther. <laughs> and we just put it in a microwave every Sunday, vamp it up and bring it to you again. Sing the same old songs. I mean, what do we do it for? Be straight, say, I, I'm not satisfied. I want something more. I want, to, I want to experience the presence. I want to experience the power. I want to feel the glory. I want to experience cripples walking and blind eyes opening. Dead people being raised, man. Uh, verse 11 for if that which is done away now he says not it's gonna go he says it's, cl it's cloud gone okay Hebrews chapter 8 is gone if that which is done away was glorious much more that which remaineth is glorious now we know the one is death and the one is life seeing then that we have such hope we use great plainness of speech. He says, if we understand what we're talking about, this is how you're going to know that we understand it. You're going to understand it by our speech. Hmm? In other words, if I say legalistic, law, judgmental, condemning things, I classify myself in the ministration of death. But if I refuse to say condemning, judgmental, ugly stuff, and I force myself to say things of the Spirit, of the New Testament, if I speak constantly words of life, glory must come, life must come, something must happen to my body. Hmm? Hmm? Ah, he's stupid, man. The Bible says if you say that, you will give reckoning in the flames of hell. 
But we don't care about hell anymore, so we just say, yeah, he's stupid man, he's ugly idiot man. Okay, you don't say it, but you heard them saying it there in the shop, you know. It's not a do what I'm talking about. This is not works that I'm talking. It's just, where's your mind? Where's your heart? Is it filled and flooded with peace? Okay. To the faithful in Christ Jesus, peace to you from God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ. So how can I read the rest of Ephesians if I don't want to get to the peace part? This is number one. Grace and peace. It's not a working of peace. It's a receiving of what God said I want you to have. Don't be anxious. Cast it on Jesus. Peace of God. Rule your heart. Rule your mind. Don't be anxious. Peace of God. Rule your heart. Rule your mind. Don't be anxious. Peace of God. Rule your heart. Rule your mind. Don't be. Set your mind on things above. Think Christ. Think blessed. Think chosen, think beloved, think, oh, sanctified, think justified, think glorified, think righteous, think forgiven, think freedom, think life. Hmm? Now, if I do think it, I will use plainness of speech. <laughs> 